Hi, I'm Stephen with Alberta Urban Garden .ca. Melons are one of the crops that I've tried to grow a number of times throughout the years with varying success in my garden. I absolutely love the taste of fresh watermelon or cantaloupe and can only imagine how much better it would be if I was able to grow it at home. Melons are a heat loving crop that take a long growing season often to grow and ripen properly. So when I grow them in my zone 3 garden, I'm definitely pushing how far north that they can grow. So this year I thought I would attack this problem with a number of different strategies to see if I can enjoy some fresh melons grown right here in the Alberta Urban Garden. When growing melons this far north, it's really important to select a location that gets the most possible sunlight. In this case, during the summer solstice, I get about 17 hours of direct sunlight, essentially packing in a few more hours of growth each and every day. Melons require warm soil temperatures to germinate and grow properly throughout the growing season. This leads me to the second consideration when I was selecting the location to grow these in. I grew mine in raised beds, which warm up earlier in the spring and on average maintain a higher soil temperature than native soil around them. This is likely the problem that has plagued me in the past. So I started with a pile of nice warm compost as soon as the pile thawed in the spring. This compost will continue to release heat for a few weeks as the material decays, keeping the soil temperature higher. It will also add nutrients to the soil as the season goes on, feeding the melon plants. Finally, before planting, I placed a hoop house I used for my winter crops over the planting location. During the day when the sun comes through, it acts as a miniature greenhouse, helping to warm the soil and compost. When closed at night, it preserves heat and prevents frost damage. It is important to open a small air vent during the day after the melon plants have sprouted, as the air temperatures can increase quickly and damage the plants. When it comes time to plant, I placed a pocket of soil on top of the compost pile and planted a number of seeds directly into the soil. You can start your seeds in the house and transplant them out once the threat of frost has passed. However, I found that the seedlings are very sensitive to transplant shock and set them back further than their direct sown counterparts. I made sure to select a variety that had a short days to harvest as indicated on the seed package. I also made sure that it was a relatively small bodied fruit. The short days to harvest number will help me outrun the inevitable frost that usually does a lot of damage to longer season crops. The small fruit size means I do not have to support the fruit when grown above ground. Later I'll talk about how this helps me determine when they are ripe as well. With all of the focus on heating the soil, I did find it important to make sure I kept up on the watering. It was not difficult to do, but still worth a mention. Come June, the nighttime temperatures were well above 10 degrees Celsius or 50 Fahrenheit, so I removed the hoop house. I placed a number of black rocks around my compost heap that my father had brought from the subarctic. These stones help increase and keep soil temperatures higher after removing the hoop house. When the summer heat hits the melons, the plants are large enough to shade the rocks, reducing their ability to overheat the soil. Melons are vining crops, and if allowed to grow along the ground, would compete with the rest of my garden plants in my densely packed garden. So I chose to grow them vertically using a simple teepee trellis. The trellis is very simple to build. Take four or five long bamboo stakes and make a teepee structure. I chose six foot stakes, as after they were placed in the soil 30 to 45 centimeters or 12 to 18 inches, there was still sufficient height for the plants to climb, however, they were not going to significantly shade their neighbors. Make sure the center of the peak is in the center of the circle. This will help distribute the weight evenly. I tied the peak of the trellis, starting with Velcro tape, and then nylon string. It is important to weave the nylon string in, over, around, and under each of the stakes. Finally, I used the same nylon tomato netting that I used for the electrical conduit trellis. It is extremely strong and won't decay over the course of a season and is a nice green color, making it harder to see during the growing season. I simply wove it around the peak, blanketing it around the teepee. Alternatively, you can use an electrical conduit trellis or any other structure that you can attach a vine to without damaging it. Training the vine is quite simple as it grows. I simply wrap the netting around the vine in the direction I wanted it to go. The vine has tendrils that will also help it climb and secure itself. I continued to do this until the vine hit the top of the teepee trellis and then simply let it cascade back down on itself. This trellis helps keep the vines under control 
and has the added benefit of allowing the plant to access the sun a little earlier and a little later in the day when the fence is shading the rest of the garden. You can tell when a melon like this one is ripe when it turns tan, yellow, or cream. Alternatively, it should smell like a very sweet melon. When using a teepee structure like this, it's also ripe when it slips off the vine, or when you pick it up and twist it gently, it should also slip off when it's completely ripened. With watermelons, you can tell they're ripe when the last tendril closest to the fruit, in fact, dries up. If you have an impending frost, which is common during this time of year, this teepee trellis allows you to protect against the frost by simply throwing a blanket over it. Alternatively, you can harvest the melons, bring them inside, and put them in a warm, dry location to allow them to ripen up inside the house. As these melons will likely be the first ones that I have successfully grown in my garden here in Alberta, Canada, what I'll do is I'll actually be saving their seeds to make sure that I have a known variety that can grow fast enough in my area. So what I'll do is I'll simply cut the melon in half, remove the flesh from the seeds, and dry them on a paper plate in the basement where it's nice and warm during the winter and dry. Thank you very much for joining me today. I appreciate it very much, and I hope you have a fantastic day.